Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make incredibly fudgy, flourless walnut brownies. Yes, flourless brownies. I'm going to be using coconut flour instead of regular flour and you are not going to miss the regular flour because these brownies are spectacular. They're fudgy and rich and delicious and I'm gonna be adding some walnut pieces for some crunch, but of course, if you're not a walnut fan, then don't add them. But I like the contrast and textures between that fudgy, rich chocolate brownie and the little bit of a crunch that you get from those little walnuts running throughout. So let's not wait another second and let's get started. For today's recipe, you will need 16 tablespoons of salted butter. In other words, two sticks, eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, plus another eight ounces separate. Half a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, one cup of sugar, one cup of dark brown sugar, packed, a quarter teaspoon salt, six large eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla, a half a cup of coconut flour, and a half a cup of shelled walnuts. You will also need a cutting board and a knife, a nine by 13 Pyrex baking dish or your favorite nine by 13 baking dish, a bowl and a fork, some dry measuring cups, some measuring spoons, some oven mitts, and a medium pot and either a wooden spoon, a serving spoon or a silicone spatula. So now that we have all of our tools and ingredients together, let's get started. The first thing you're going to wanna to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Then grab your cutting board and knife and your walnuts. I like to buy walnuts that are not already chopped and chop them myself for this recipe because I like larger pieces in my brownies and I find that the chopped walnuts come chopped very small. So this way I can control the size of the pieces of my walnuts. I just wanna give them a rough chop because I do want to have some larger pieces, but of course I don't wanna leave them whole because that would be too large. So just buy shelled walnuts and then give them a rough chop yourself. So this is the size you are aiming for once you've chopped your walnuts up. You want some fairly large chunks, not huge, but fairly large pieces. So that way you can really feel that crunch in your incredibly fudgy, flourless walnut brownies. So I measured this out just for good measure and it was exactly half a cup. So set them aside, and now you're going to add your butter sticks to your pot. Now, once they are in, you wanna turn your stove on to about medium. What we wanna do is to melt these butter sticks, and they are going to help us melt one of those portions of chocolate that we have measured out. So just set it to medium and give it an occasional stir until it's nice and melted. And then you can lower your heat to low or a medium simmer, depending on your stove top, and then just keep it simmering very low. Then bring over eight ounces of your chocolate chips, and we're going to add them to this melted butter. And then you're going to use your favorite stirring utensil, and you're going to stir the butter and chocolate over this very low heat until the chocolate has fully dissolved and it's become thick and creamy and just this delicious chocolatey mixture. It really shouldn't take more than three or four minutes for that hot melted butter to really just break down those chips and have them melt. Just keep stirring and just slowly bring the ingredients together and soon you'll have a thick, beautiful 
chocolatey delicious mixture that is smelling incredible. So we are almost there. Our mixture is just now starting to thicken up and most of the chips have melted. And this is what it's looking like once they have come together. Notice how I use the back of my wooden spoon to just kind of break down any chips that I may find that haven't fully dissolved. And then once I find that they're all melted and the mixture has come together, then that's when it's going to be ready. And let me tell you, it is smelling incredible. These brownies are so chocolatey and delicious. Really, they are so yummy. So our mixture is ready. So now it's time to turn our heat off. And then we're just gonna take this pot and move it over and take it off of the heat and continue working right in this same pot. So the first thing you wanna do is measure out your sugar and add it to the mixture. And then you wanna measure out your brown sugar and remember to pack it down into the cup and then add that. Then measure out your salt and add it to the mixture. And then you wanna measure out your vanilla and you're going to add that. I will mention that you can actually even use these brownies during Passover, but if you decide to make this recipe during Passover, then omit the vanilla as it usually is not kosher for Passover. And then of course, be sure that you are using kosher for Passover, coconut flour and kosher for Passover, chocolate, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't make this recipe just during Passover. I make this recipe the whole year through because it is the best brownie recipe you wanna eat. It's just an added bonus that there's no flour in it and it's made with coconut flour instead, but it is incredibly delicious. It's a recipe you're going to wanna make all year long. So once you have all of those ingredients together, then just use your wooden spoon or preferred utensil and just mix all of the ingredients together right there in the same pot. And we're just looking to bring them all together until all of the ingredients we've added have just fully incorporated and the mixture has become quite thick. Now, once we reach that point, you wanna grab your bowl and your fork and you wanna crack six eggs into your bowl. And then you're going to beat those eggs well with your fork as we are going to be adding them to this chocolatey mixture. I waited to add my eggs until now after I added the sugars and the vanilla because stirring the mixture and having taken it off of the heat has given the mixture a chance to cool down so I don't risk making scrambled eggs. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to add my eggs now. So bring them over to your pot and you can safely add them in because now the mixture is cool enough that your eggs will not cook. So along with those eggs, you also want to measure out your unsweetened cocoa powder and you want to add it to the mixture. And then you wanna measure out your coconut flour and you wanna add that. No one is going to believe these brownies are flourless because that coconut flour really helps just give this brownie an incredible texture. They really are incredibly fudgy. It's unreal. And of course, they have so much chocolate in them. How could they not be? But it's really mainly the chocolate and of course the eggs that help give them the rise and then that touch of coconut flour. It's not even that much coconut flour. So you don't really feel a coconut flavor in your brownie, it's just an incredible fudgy brownie that you are going to love. So just stir all of these ingredients together until you've incorporated them well. And then notice that the mixture is just releasing itself from the bottom of the pot. That's when you know that the ingredients have been well incorporated and the mixture is now ready to receive those delicious chopped walnuts that we chopped up earlier. And then we are going to add that second portion of chocolate chips. Now, these chips and walnuts give this brownie incredible texture. The chips do melt as the brownie cooks, but it just 
does something to the overall texture of the brownie that makes them incredibly fudgy. And of course, those delicious walnut chunks just really bring this brownie over the top. It is an incredible brownie, hence the name Incredibly Fudgy Flourless Walnut Brownies. You are going to love these. So now that we've incorporated the walnuts and the chips, it is time to take this delicious chocolatey fudgy mixture and add it to our baking dish. But before we do, I wanna line it with parchment paper because it's really going to make it easy to take these brownies out of this pan if you line it well with parchment. And what I do is I put one piece going one way and then another smaller piece going the other way to just give me some handles to help pull the brownie out. Of course, you can serve the brownie right here in this baking dish. You don't have to pull it out, but I like to take the whole thing out. So once you've lined your baking dish, then bring over your deliciously fudgy mixture and add it to your pan. And then just use your spoon to help spread the mixture out. What you wanna do is to just bring the mixture all the way to the ends so that you have an even distribution in your pan. Now, carefully take your pan over to the hot oven and set it onto a center rack to bake and set a 30 minute timer to give it a chance to cook through. It is going to smell incredible in your kitchen. And after 30 minutes, it is ready to be pulled out and it is already looking amazing. Look at that beautiful shiny top that is so classic of a brownie. You really want that beautiful texture to your brownie. And even though there's no flour in this brownie, you get that incredibly fudgy texture. So what I like to do is wait about five minutes and then I use a long thin knife to separate any portions of the brownie that may not have parchment. And that way they do not stick to my pan when I'm ready to remove the entire brownie from it. Do you see how easy it was? Since I had those handles, the entire brownie comes out whole and it is looking and smelling incredible. This brownie is so fudgy and delicious. No one is going to even notice that it is flourless and they are not gonna believe it when you tell them. It is going to become everyone's favorite brownie. So now all that's left to do is to portion your brownie because of course you don't wanna eat this whole thing by yourself. It is really thick and rich and delicious, but don't be tempted to eat it all. So what I do is I portion it into 18 pieces because I find that that is the perfect piece because these brownies are really chocolatey and really rich. So into 18 pieces is probably the perfect slice. Now, of course, no one will judge you if you want to have more than one piece, but trust me, it's a thick, rich brownie that you are going to absolutely adore. And this is an incredible dessert to serve for company. So if you just want to fancy it up, find a beautiful platter and just make a really pretty design on it and then serve them on that. And it will feel like you're eating in a gourmet restaurant. They are that good. And just a little bit of creative plating and they will look even more spectacular. So have fun with them. So now for my favorite part. I've been admiring them long enough. My kitchen is smelling incredible. These are fudgy and incredibly thick and I just cannot wait to take a bite. So here I go. These feel so fudgy. It's crazy that there's no flour in these brownies. They are so amazing. Wow, look at how they glisten. They're just moist and fudgy. I need to take a bite. Mmm, wow, 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 wow. I love them every time. They are so good. And really, you cannot believe that these don't have flour in them. 
They are just amazing. They have the same texture as you would find in a brownie with flour, but there's no flour in them. Yum, with those little extra pieces of walnut that I put on top. Wow, I'm gonna enjoy this. Mmm, amazing, so good. You are not gonna believe how good these are. You are going to wanna make these all year long all of the time. It is going to become everyone's favorite dessert. They are incredibly delicious and incredibly fudgy and of course, flourless. Amazing. So how incredible do these brownies look? Didn't I say they would be incredibly fudgy? Well, they are. They are fudgy and rich and delicious and filled with chocolate. And of course, the contrast with those little pieces running throughout that gives them just a little bit of a crunch through that delicious fudgy chocolate base is spectacular. You are going to love it. Trust me, no, better yet, don't trust me. You're gonna have to try to make this recipe yourself. And of course, if you've enjoyed today's recipe, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Sharing is super important to my channel, so I really appreciate when you do it. And if you're not already following Sally That Girl in the Kitchen on social media, please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. And if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to touch that little notification bell so that you don't miss out on a single amazing, delicious, incredibly fudgy recipe that I have planned for you. See you next time. Sally that girl in the kitchen.